I wish I could give you advice about middle school, but I was so smart I skipped it. If you make it to high school, we'll talk. Welcome to Ms Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Young Sheldon moments. But that was the best trip I ever had. I wish I had told my father while he was alive. For this list, we'll be looking at memorable scenes from the Big Bang prequel that shine above the rest. What's your favorite Young Sheldon moment? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Georgie kisses Veronica during baptism When Georgie's old flame decides to take the path of Christ, he makes the decision to do the same so he can continue to spend time with her. I'm glad you could join us. Come in, won't you? You're part of the group, too. Faith, the Bible, God, I'm nuts for that stuff. This leads to him choosing to be baptized with her, which gives us a great moment between the two. Veronica's head is dipped in water, but as she comes back up, it's not so innocent a look for poor Georgie. All he sees is a pretty girl stroking her hair right out of the countless music videos of the era. Mesmerized by her, he confesses his love and kisses her. Hallelujah! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. I love you. She quickly retaliates with a punch to the face, and viewers are left in hysterics. <laughs> Number 9 Grammar Assignment Despite the show being called Young Sheldon, we really like it when the other characters in the family interact with each other too. Can you help me? With what? I don't understand my homework. You're asking me? I don't understand my own homework. I know, but you're all I got. In this late season one episode, Missy is struggling with her grammar assignments and enlists Georgie's help. Resistant at first, he forges ahead not wanting Sheldon to be the only smart one in the house. Sometimes I tell myself I only look stupid because he's so smart. Give me the book. The best moment of this storyline, however, is when Missy slips her assignment under his door and he sees the 100% mark on top. Did you cry when you saw it? No. Why not? Because it ain't that big a deal. He tells her it's not a big deal, but pins it to his corkboard, clearly showing it means a lot more to him than he wants to admit. Did you hang it on your wall? Get out of here! I'm telling people you cried. Number 8. Missy can't join the baseball team Turns out Georgie isn't the only athletically inclined member of the Cooper family. Missy has a great arm for baseball and wants to try out for the team. They don't have any baseball teams for girls. Wait a few years, you can play softball. I don't want to wait. I want to play baseball. But you'll be the only girl. I don't care. When her dad brings her to see Coach Dale, he shoots down any shot she might have because she's a girl. No, I want to hear her. Look, sweetheart, I just think it's great you want to be on the team, but these boys are going to eat you alive. I'm not afraid of them. Well, maybe you should be. Defeated, she returns home distraught. As Meemaw drags Missy away to confront the coach, Sheldon calls her name. Are you all right? Leave me alone. Was there a written test and you couldn't remember what I told you? No. Uh, you want to be on that baseball team? Yes, but the coach said I, I don't care what he said. Get your glove. Let's go. Expecting some put down, he gives a couple of words of encouragement, and her face changes from irritation to appreciation. Missy. What? Do good baseball. This little moment marks a heartfelt transition from hopelessness to self confidence. Number 7. What's really going on with Dr. Sturgis? How do you tell a 10-year-old, even if they are a genius, that their beloved mentor had a mental breakdown? I should think so. He confirmed the neutrino's existence 35 years ago. What the heck are they waiting for? Lots of talented people don't get recognized. It starts at the end of season 2 when Dr. Sturgis can't make Sheldon's Nobel Prize party. You're my mom. You live on the premises. At least Dr. Sturgis should be here any minute. 
Shelly, I'm afraid Dr. Sturgis isn't coming this morning. Sheldon is almost brought to tears as Mary tells him Sturgis isn't feeling well. We love how Zoe Perry somehow manages to convey the mental gymnastics Mary must have been doing to not tell Sheldon the whole truth about why Sturgis is sick. He isn't feeling well. Oh dear. Should we send him a get well card? I think that'd be terrific. One episode later, however, she tells Sheldon the truth, and we're treated to the second half of this touching story. The psychiatric kind. Why? What's going on? He was having some issues, but he's getting the help he needs, and I'm sure he's going to be fine. Number six, Missing Sheldon. As much as brothers and sisters can fight and argue, there's always some kind of underlying love that exists between them. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I'm sure you'll feel better in the morning. Hey, Mom, you know how twins can feel each other's pain? You're going to school tomorrow. I think she's getting smarter. Never is this more evident than when Sheldon has to spend the night at the hospital. Even after Meemaw tries to assure Missy that Sheldon will be fine, you can tell she's about to have an uneasy night. Your brother's gonna be just fine. Yeah, I know. I'll tell you what, if I hear any news, I will come and wake you up. Thank you. As she lies there staring across at Sheldon's empty bed, both the look on her face and the frame of the scene tell us everything she's feeling. But the icing on the cake is when she crawls into Sheldon's bed, just so she can in some way still be close to him. Now that is how you pull at the heartstrings. <laughs> Number 5. Sheldon Comforts His Friend one of the best marks of a TV show is when even the most obnoxious characters are given moments to shine. My history with Paige brought up complicated feelings. She challenged me. Do you know if he'll be doing a full color arctic calculation with matrix manipulations? I know you're in my spot. One of the best examples of this comes in season three, when Sheldon's nemesis Paige is dealing with the fallout of her parents' divorce. It leads to Sheldon taking Dr. Sturge's advice to just listen to her. How do I make her understand that being smart is the best? Might I suggest, instead of trying to fix her problem, you just listen. Annoyed at first, she opens up and tells him everything. As the tears roll down her face, Sheldon realizes how he's powerless to help her. It's just hard to care. Everything that used to seem important to me just doesn't anymore. It's a kinder and softer side to him that we'd really only previously seen with his family. And of course, he offers her a hot beverage. There was nothing I could do to fix this, or so I thought. Can I offer you a hot beverage? That would be nice. Be right back. Number 4. Oven Mitt Off Despite what the Big Bang Theory leads us to believe, we'd see George Cooper's softer side towards his son from time to time, including taking Sheldon to NASA. All right, here's the deal. My kid's got a damn ulcer because of you, so either you take him seriously, or you're going to be taking me seriously. Yes, sir. Janice, why don't you send little boy in? But the first time comes in the pilot episode of Young Sheldon. George tells Sheldon an emotional story about being fired as a coach. Football coaches aren't allowed to recruit kids from other high schools to play on their teams. And you told on them? Yeah. You know what happened? Justice descended upon the rule breakers? I got fired, Sheldon. Hearing how upset his father is, we get a long pause that tells the audience Sheldon sees his dad differently, knowing his hardship. This continues on at dinner when Sheldon takes off his oven mitt so he can actually hold his father's hand during prayer. That was the first time I held my father's hand. 
Not only does this show affection for his dad, but it tells the audience that Sheldon didn't always hate his father, despite what we may have thought. Are you sad that you got fired? Mostly angry. But yeah, maybe a little sad. Number three, valedictorian speech. Sheldon is about to graduate high school and is feeling nervous about all things that come next. What do you get? Why you don't want to go to college? I doubt that you do. You're scared everything's going to be different and it'll be hard. Coincidentally, Missy is feeling the same things about going into middle school. As they both lay in bed, Missy tells Sheldon that it's okay to be scared, but we sometimes just have to do things anyway. You're scared? Yeah. So what do we do? I guess be scared and do it anyway. Upon starting his speech at graduation, he dedicates it to his sister and recites her advice to him for all to hear. But I know we're going to be fine. Because like you said, it's okay to be scared. We just have to do it anyway. The sheer look of glee and surprise on her face immediately tells us it was unexpected and incredibly meaningful to her. It's a glowing example of how siblings can certainly disagree, but often have more love between them. So if any of my fellow graduates are nervous about the future, know that you're not alone. I suggest you all try to be as brave as my twin sister. That's my plan. Number two, thunder and lightning. When George decides to take Sheldon and Georgie to see a space shuttle launch, all does not go as planned. It'll pass. Just get some sleep. Didn't pass. With thunderstorms in the air, the takeoff is cancelled and Sheldon is left dismayed. George asks Sheldon questions about the lightning and thunder as a means to take his son's mind off what he had missed that day. Never understood how lightning works. Didn't they teach you that in high school? They probably did, but... I got hit in the head a lot playing football. George may not understand much of the science his son loves so much, but he does understand what makes him happy. So when narrator Sheldon tells us this was his favorite trip, it's easy to recognize why. My father was only asking questions about lightning and thunder to cheer me up. In fact, he would often pretend to be dumb just to make me feel better. It's a great moment for both Sheldon and his dad that he's held onto forever. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Mimo's garage sale. Now that's how you haggle. And I was gonna leave a little room to haggle. What the haggle? Negotiating. You start high, they offer less, then you meet somewhere in the middle, leaves them feeling like, you know, they got a deal. Did they? Not if you did it right. Mima gives George the fake brisket recipe, more secretive than the KFC recipe. What you have in your hand is the exact step-by-step -step instructions on how to make my brisket. I have never written it down until tonight because I was afraid someone might steal it. The relationship agreement. The origins of Leonard's worst nightmare. I would go on to draw up such contracts throughout my life with roommates, with my wife, even with my own children. Mary's Caltech letter. Sometimes parents just don't understand. How could you not tell me that Caltech wants me to go to school there? Because you're not going, so it doesn't matter. So I don't get a say in this? Actually, no, which is why that letter is addressed to the parents of Sheldon Cooper. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Nobel Prize. As Sheldon sits in the garage listening for the winners of the Nobel Prize, he's alone and thinking he always will be. A primary feature of quarks is that they're always bonded together. 
But in that moment, I felt like a neutrino, destined to be alone forever. Given the time period in which the prequel series takes place, there's not a lot of opportunities for the original show's cast to appear on camera. Some have done narration, obviously, and Kaylee Cuoco did the voice of the pool in one of Sheldon's dreams. I'm cleaner than your daddy's plate after Thanksgiving dinner. Wow, that's pretty clean. Look how clear I am, Sheldon. You can see all the way to the bottom. Still, it's when we're treated to a montage of all the other Big Bang characters at this point in time, we're reassured knowing Sheldon will never really be alone. Thankfully, I was wrong. Given how this episode and the original series finale aired on the same night, it was the perfect way to connect the two shows. I apologize if I haven't been the friend you deserve. But I want you to know, in my way, I love you all. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.